Hey everyone, it's Theo from Spectrum Gardening. So roughly seven days ago, we planted both our broccoli and we planted also our leeks. And uh, about five days ago, we also planted all our hot peppers and our artichokes. So let's take a look to see how they're doing. The other thing I want to talk about in this video is watering. Um, it's very important for the seeds to have constant moisture in their soil for them to successfully germinate. The longer the, the longer the seeds take to germinate, the more chances the soil are gonna uh, dry out, especially for hot peppers or things that take a very long time to actually pop. Like the leeks that we had over here and the broccoli, they popped pretty quickly. They actually popped, uh, they germinated within three days of um, planting them. And so I was just basically adjusting the uh, turny like flap thingies on top of my humidity dome to keep the water uh, to keep the water levels correct, I actually haven't had to water them really uh, yet. However, let's take a look at the let's take a look at a couple trays of the pop of the hot peppers, and then we'll discuss it a little bit further. Since my pepper and my artichoke seeds haven't uh, popped yet, I'm still keeping these little vents here closed. Uh, they're op that's open and that's closed because I'm wanting to keep the humidity and the heat inside them. And that's also going to help uh, prevent my soil from drying out too fast. In this tray here, we have our leeks. And you can see there's still quite a bit of uh, condensation uh, under the dome. What I have been doing for the past couple days is opening up these vents here and letting them out. Now let's take this cover off and take a look to see uh, what's going on underneath. So you can see the tray is basically full of leeks. I honestly can't remember how many I planted, but I would say probably three quarters at least have germinated. So at this point, I actually don't need the humidity dome anymore um, because it's kind of done its uh, it's done its job by keeping all the heat and the moisture um, under inside and trapped and trapped to help the to help the seeds pop a little bit more. Now let's take a look at the broccoli. So the broccoli is also uh, germinating very well. You can see that I've still got some popping uh, coming up through here. And uh, you can see on this uh, cell right here that we've got another one coming out. And I would say probably three quarters of this has already germinated also. However, in the back, I have some pepper seeds. So let's talk about those. Here we have a tray of broccoli mixed with peppers. The broccoli is one in one half of it. And you can see at least three quarters of the seeds have popped so far and uh, they're coming along quite nicely. But in this other half over here, we have the pepper seeds. So this, it's actually only a two day uh, planting difference between the two. Um, however, pepper seeds do take a lot longer to germinate. So having them on the same tray is not ideal. So we have two different options that we can deal with, uh, that we can go forward with uh, at this point. The first option is to cover the half, the half of the uh, tray that hasn't germinated yet with plastic. So I, if, I'm limited, if you're limited on space, or let's say you don't have enough domes or any trays, you can just do this. You can just cover it with plastic and then you can still keep the humidity in that half of the tray. The other option will be if you have room or if you have more trays or you uh, have more lids or things like that, um, is to take this, the cells from this half of the tray, put them in, in their own separate tray and recover them with a, another, uh, with another humidity dome and then put them back onto your grow rack or grow shelf if you have space in them. We're going to be going for the second option because you can, as you can see in our grow rack, we have quite a bit of room in there. So let's get that started. Typically, I wouldn't need to remove my trays from the grow rack to water them because of what I use uh, to water my seedlings with. Um, however, I wanted to make sure I got a good close up of the different uh, things going on with the soil right now. So even just by looking at them, I can tell these cells along here are drying out. Just because the uh, soil looks lighter 
than the other ones. And if we get a little bit closer and we kind of focus on it, I can tell they're also drying out because uh, they're pulling away from the cell walls. As you can see, uh, like along here, they're pulling away up there. And if you look even just the ones next to them, they're not looking like they're pulled away. They're kind of like right up against it. And it's also these ones look kind of hard, crusty. And if we touch them, we touch them over here, the whole thing feels hard. Uh, this one feels soft and moist. So if you're not sure just by looking at them, if they need water, you can always touch them a little bit. It's not going to hurt the seeds uh, inside. It's actually going to be better for them versus letting them dry out. The way I water my seedlings or my cells on my grow rack is with a deck sprayer because it has a wand like this. I can leave my grow, I can leave my uh, trays right on my grow rack and I can reach right in the back of each tray and I can water them without ever actually having to physically remove them. And also I can put the wand right at the soil level so I'm not actually watering the leaves of the plants. Or let's say I want a bottom water, I can lift up a cell and just fill up the tray like this. It's a huge amount of labor savings, labor saving for us. Imagine having to physically remove 16 trays from the grow, from the grow rack each time and water them down the floor and then put them back up. Having the deck sprayer, I leave them all. I don't have to move the lights. I don't have to do anything. I just focus on watering. This is the deck uh, sprayer canister. The way it works is uh, this part comes off and you fill it up by water right here, just through up here, and then you screw this back on, just like so. And then when you need water, you pressurize it by pumping it like this. And after you're finished pumping it to however much you need, there's a pressure release valve right there that releases the, releases the pressure from inside. The one thing you don't want to do though is leaving this pressurized. Uh, it just has a warning not to. Um, it does come with various different tips for the decks, for the wand part. What we've done is actually removed all the tips. So we just basically get a stream coming out of there. We've tried different ones, but um, we found that they're basically just either too hard or too soft or they just don't work. So we found if we remove all the tips, we get a better stream of water that we can control more. So now let's get to it. You can see how quickly I was able to pressurize that canister. Once I started to feel a form of resistance when I was pumping air into it, that's when I stopped. So the fuller your canister is of water, the less you're gonna to have to pump. The more that you use the water out of it, of course, you're gonna to have to fill the space with more air. So what I do is I typically pump it all up and then I start watering. And then when I start using, uh, losing water pressure, uh, what's gonna happen is you get little like air bubbles in your uh, water line, which can be quite uh, annoying and dangerous because if they're gonna start hitting the soil and they'll start kind of splashing your soil all the way all over and if you have tender seedlings in there that can wreak havoc on them. So once I start uh, seeing some uh, loss in pressure, that's when I stop watering and re-pump the canister again. You may have noticed in the last clip, I didn't water the whole tray of seedlings. I just watered the cells that kind of needed it. The reason for that is because I didn't want to oversaturate the soil that was already moist. And the cells that were super dry that I was watering, you probably know, you probably also may have noticed that they had trouble absorbing the water initially because they were so dry. They were becoming uh, hydrophobic. Uh, ideally, you shouldn't be letting your cells out, cells or soil dry out that much uh, because it's just not good for the plants and it's just not good for the seed, seeds. However, ideally in reality are two different things. Uh, so what I had to do be 
because they weren't absorbing the water right away, I watered them, I left them, uh, I left the water kind of slowly absorb, and then I went back and watered them again to make sure that they'd be fully saturated. So if you're wondering where you can buy a deck sprayer from, like what I have, you can buy it from Costco. I think that's actually where we got ours from. Oh, Amazon, Home Depot, Rona, um, Home Hardware. Basically any type of home improvement place will sell them. And they come in various different sizes. Of course, with various different price tags. Honestly, I wish ours was uh, at least double the size. Because when I'm or when I'm refilling, when I'm uh, watering all our seedlings, I'm doing 32 trays at maximum. I have to refill that deck sprayer two or three times to water everything. But if you're just a home grower um, and you're just having a couple seedlings, uh, a couple trays of seedlings, you don't really need a big one. Just get a small one and that'll be fine. If you have any questions or comments about the process that we've just shown you. Uh, don't forget to throw them down in the comment section below and we will address them. And of course, give us a thumbs up and to subscribe to our channel.